back to my channel. My name is Caitlin Brooke and I am a hairstylist and salon owner here in Western North Carolina. And today is video two of my Back to Basics series for cosmetology. So if you are in cosmetology school or interested in the career, make sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on that post notification bell so that you know when we post new videos every single week. If you are interested in this series and you want to go back to my first video, I will link that down below and at the end of this one so you can see my cosmetology school experience. So today on our series, I'm going to be going over how I found my first salon and how I would suggest that you guys find your first salon and mistakes that I wish I would not have made when going to find this salon. So when i got out of cosmetology school social media for hair really did not exist which is a huge downfall for me so craigslist and indeed were really the only two places that i had to look and so a little bit of a backstory as soon as i graduated cosmetology school i actually went and took an extension course because i knew that's what i wanted to specialize in and so I got certified in extensions right away and so a lot of people around town definitely knew that because I do live in a fairly small area and there are no other salons that offer extensions or no other hairstylists that offer extensions and so I was pretty much the only one in our town doing it and it was a new and exciting thing so of course salon owners wanted to be able to have that in their salon and be able to offer it. I went and I toured a couple of different salons and of course in a small town word travels fast that I was looking for a place to work and I actually had a few salon owners directly contact me and see if I was looking for a job. Two in particular, one of those I was not really interested in at all and the other I actually didn't know anything at all and I wish that I would have. However, I went ahead and I went for the interview and she had her whole salon team there other than like one or two people to meet me. So at first I thought that that was a good thing. Um, I went in and I met everyone and I felt very comfortable. They were all super nice, extra friendly, and very interested in extensions. Of course, me being 17 and super naive, I had no idea that I was being taken advantage of. And so I decided to take the job there. And every single salon except for one in my town were booth rental salons and I wasn't necessarily looking at the commission salon for more reasons than one, but specifically because my hair school out of the girls that graduated, three girls went to go work there straight out of school because it was commissioned and it seemed ideal at the time. And that just wasn't something that I wanted to do. So you will have the option of going to a commission or a booth rental salon. And I would highly suggest assisting if that's possible. However, I do know that that's not super common in small towns. I am the only stylist in our town that has an assistant and it's not like anything that people are really willing to do. So if you're able to find an assisting position, it's the best thing that you'll ever do for your career. When it comes to you finding your salon, once you've decided whether it's booth rental or commission, like I said before, social media was not really a thing for us. If I was to go back and try to find a salon today, I would have used social media 100%. So I say look on Facebook listings and then also check out the salon's page itself. So you wanna look at their Facebook page and their Instagram page look at the work that they do, see if it looks good, see if it has the vibe that you're going for. And then also I would definitely recommend booking an appointment at the salon. So even if it's just for a blowout with someone that works there, you can go in and not really tell the salon that you're looking for a job, but just kind of get a feel for how the salon works, what the atmosphere is like, and then you'll really get to know whether or not this is somewhere that you feel like you would fit in at, and you'll really get to kind of see exactly how it is that they work on a day-to-day -day basis, because when you go in for an interview, of course, they're going to act a little bit different than what they would on a normal basis because they're trying to impress you. Once you've kind of done your research and looked at their reviews, looked at their stuff online, their photos, their team, all of those things, then I would reach out around to you to your teacher or anyone like that and kind of see if you can find someone that has worked at that salon and get their personal experience from working there. And of course, from there, you can reach out, try to get an interview. In my next video, I'm going to be talking about how to land your first salon job. So if you're interested in that, then make sure to turn on that bell notification because we will be posting that next Thursday. So moving on from choosing that salon, when I worked at this very first salon, it was booth 
booth rental, like I said. So I actually worked a second job to be able to pay booth rent for the first few months. I think it was maybe two or three months after I started that I felt comfortable bringing in an income that would pay booth rent um, and not having to worry about anything. Thankfully, I did live at home with my parents because I was 17 years old. So I didn't really have a whole lot of bills to worry about or anything like that other than my rent and my supplies for the salon. So I just kind of worked that other job to save up some money and then I definitely decided to quit. Everyone's situation is different as far as like having bills to pay and living at home and all of those things. But if you are in an opportunity where you don't have to work a second job, great. That gives you even more opportunity. However, I just worked it until I felt comfortable being able to pay rent and having a nice bit of savings saved up so that I was ready to pay rent and not feel like I was falling behind if whatever happened and I didn't have clients one week. So coming in on my first day of work at my new salon, I was super excited and a little bit nervous just being so young compared to all of the other girls considering i was 17 and they were all like late 20s to 50s i was definitely on the minority side of the salon but that being said i went in and i was super excited and i was just ready to kind of get started and i actually had a few clients lined up for my first day so it was exciting for me to actually like be able to start working right off the bat not to say that my clientele was full by any means but just being able to kind of get my hands on a real head of hair and actually get paid for it was super cool considering in cosmetology school you don't get paid at all so over time working at that salon my clientele began to build quickly and there were some girls there that definitely did not like that because they had been doing hair for longer than I did so it was just a very catty situation where they would sit there and stare at my clients and my clients began to express that they felt uncomfortable and so that was when I really started to decide that this was probably not the best fit for me and I needed to find somewhere else to go and I think that's a big thing in a salon is if your clients don't feel comfortable, they're not going to come back. No matter how good of a hairstylist you are or how comfortable that you make them feel, if that salon is not welcoming and making them feel comfortable there, they're not going to keep coming back to you if they feel judged when they come in. I decided to actually leave that salon. And so from there, I had actually already been thinking about working at this salon. It was where I wanted to work when I first got out of school, but I was super nervous because it was 30 minutes away from my town. And I decided to go up mountain to where I wanted to work. And so when I came to visit the salon, the owner was super nice and friendly, very blunt as far as like what things were expected of me, which I loved because it wasn't very vague. And of course, all of the girls that worked there were super friendly and supportive. Absolutely loved it. Like I said, it was amazing experience and I definitely would recommend anyone looking for a salon in that area to work there. However, once I had worked there for three or yeah, three and a half years, I believe it came time for me to kind of expand on my own. And at that point, I didn't really know exactly what it is that I wanted, but I knew that one day I wanted to own my own salon. And so things kind of worked out, everything fell into place and a salon that I had loved since I was in the second grade came available for sale. So I will definitely tell that story in a future video and tell you all about how I became a salon owner and what it's like being a salon owner. We'll kind of get to that point later on in this series. I'm going to keep it short here because I know this has been a very long story time. However, let me just recap a little bit on what exactly it is that you need to do when looking for a salon. Number one, you're going to look at social media. So look at Instagram and Facebook. Number two, you're going to want to book an appointment at that salon. Salon. Number three, you definitely want to go and shadow that salon if they will allow you to, which hopefully they would if you're wanting to work there. I would say to shadow the salon for a day or half a day, just kind of see how the stylists interact with their clients, see how the clients like the salon, get the atmosphere, see how everyone is, and see if the people are actually friendly to you while you're there. If the stylists are not friendly to you while you're shadowing, they sure as heck aren't going to be friendly to you once you start working there. And that's a super important thing to love your work environment. So I would highly recommend shadowing for a day because I wish that I would have done that when I started out as well. Number four would be asking around to other people who have worked there or your teachers if they know anything about that salon owner. The last tip for you is not a very practical one as far as something that you need to do to find the salon, but it is a super important one as well. And that is if you find yourself working at a salon that you do not love, 
don't stay. It's not the end of the world to leave a salon as long as you do so, either on good terms if that's possible, or if your salon owner a notice and let them know that you're going to be leaving. Not everyone is fit to work with every single person and it's completely okay if you don't feel like this salon is the best fit for you. There are plenty of salons out there that have a good atmosphere and will make you feel comfortable and there's no reason to live your life miserable or hate your career just because of the place that you work. I hope you guys enjoyed and if you liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. I'll be posting the next video in this series next Thursday, so if you're interested, make sure to turn on that notification bell below so you know when that video goes live and like always, I hope you guys have a wonderful Thursday and have a great week.